Chapter 8, Communication and the Nurse-Patient Relationship. We're going to describe the components of the communication process, list three factors that influence the way a person communicates, compare effective communication techniques with blocks to communication, describe the difference between a therapeutic nurse-patient relationship and a social relationship. The receiver must acknowledge that the message has been received and comprehended for communication to be complete. Anxiety, fear, and pain are often expressed by nonverbal cues. Nonverbal communication is often referred to as body language. Sometimes a person's nonverbal communication is incongruent or in agreement with the verbal communication. Um, Nurses can learn a lot about patients by observing nonverbal behavior because anxiety, fear, and pain are often expressed by nonverbal cues. Cultural differences, past experiences, emotions, and mood and attitudes of individuals um, affect the communication process. Every culture has norms for appropriate communication. Other cultural aspects of communication include tone of voice and amount of gesturing used. All of our experiences affect how we perceive communication. Emotions and mood have a huge effect on the way messages are sent or interpreted. Anxious patients may not hear all that is said or may not interpret correctly. An upset person may speak more loudly than usual. A depressed person might not speak hardly at all. Um, and a person's attitude may affect how they receive the a message that you're trying to convey to them. Nurses who are active listeners are demonstrating an interest in the patient and are building a trusting relationship. Active listeners do not interrupt the speaker. Do you guys know some uh, nonverbal cues that somebody is listening to you, that they're an active listener? Um, some examples are if you lean forward, so you lean into um, a person that means you're really listening uh, if you focus on a person's face if you're nodding slightly that means you're following along and you're listening and if you maintain an open body posture so you are facing them you don't turn your back on them when they're speaking to you or pick up your cell phone Nonverbal messages must be interpreted in the context of, a, of the speaker's of the speaker's culture, not the listener's culture. When verbal and nonverbal messages are not congruent, the listener should probe the speaker further to determine the real meaning. The response received from a question should verify whether the original message was sent uh, was interpreted appropriately when you when we talk about focusing we want to keep attention focused on the communication and the task at hand continually check to see that the patient is still on topic um, that the patient is still the topic of the interaction. So you want to focus on all your attention on your patients. If it is comfortable for the patient to display feelings only in the context of telling a story about a related topic, allow enough time for full development of the topic so that feelings can be adequately expressed. The technique of therapeutic communication should be used judiciously and in a varied manner so that the interaction does not still 
does not feel slighted or uncomfortable. Silence gives the patient time to think and respond. Open-ended questions allow the patient to elaborate on a subject and create an inviting atmosphere. Restating the message encourages the patient to continue to provide information on the topic. Therapeutic touch can significantly support, can signify support for a person. However, in some cultures, it's not appropriate. Providing general leads like, tell me more about that, can get the interaction underway. Encouraging elaboration can elicit more information from the patient. Stating information concisely and allowing time for questions is important to the patient. Looking at alternatives while refraining from giving advice can help patients make their own decisions. Summarizing what has occurred during the interaction can provide closure to the discussion. Now let's talk about some blocks. Changing the subject deprives the patient of the chance to discuss concerns. Giving false assurance can lead to false hope and destroy trust in the um, trust with the nurse. Making defensive comments can make patients feel that they cannot express their concerns. Using cliche, cliches negates the patient's individual situation and sounds um, offensive. Giving advice makes the nurse sound controlling and diminishes the patient's responsibility for his or her own health. Inattentive listening sends the message um, that the patient is not that important. Question one, Andy is having difficulty uh, communicating with his patient. His patient barely understands English, is highly anxious about being hospitalized, and doesn't look at Andy when he's speaking. Which four factors affect communication? Number one, cultural differences, past experiences, emotions, and attitude. Number two, age, attitude, language, and tone of voice. Three, style, cultural difference, experience, and mood. Or four, focusing style, cultural differences, and past experiences. The answer is number one. There are four factors that affect communication. They are cultural differences, past experiences, attitudes, emotion, and mood. Um, style and focusing are type of communication skill. Age might be considered a past experience, a past experience, but not a category itself. Tone of voice um, is considered a characteristic of mood, but not a category. Question number two, Holly is trying to encourage her patient to elaborate rather than relying on short one or two word answers. Her patient relates to Holly that she uh, doesn't feel safe at home. Holly replies, would you tell me more about this? This is an example of what type of therapeutic communication technique. Number one, encouraging elaboration. Two, a restatement. Three, open-ended question or four, clarification. The answer here is um, number three. Open-ended questions create an inviting atmosphere for sharing thoughts, feelings, and concerns. Encouraging elaboration is, I'm not certain that I follow what you mean. It is used to elicit further information about a topic. Restating is used to encourage the um, patient to continue with information on a topic, and seeking clarification is used to verify that the message heard is what the patient intended. Question number three. Marisol's patient is diabetic. Marisol notices her patient eating cheesecake and, and a cola from a visitor and states, I don't think that's a good thing for you to do considering you have diabetes. This is an example of which block of communication. 
Number one, changing the subject. Two, a judgmental response. Three, defensive response. Or four, giving advice. You guessed it, number two, the nurse is judging the patient's action. It implies that the patient must take on the nurse's values and it's demeaning to the patient. Question four, Emily's patient is very nervous about her surgery. She is having a breast biopsy. Emily tells her patient, I'm sure it will turn out fine. You don't need to worry. This is an example of which communication block? Number one. Changing the subject, two, giving false reassurance, three, defensive response, or four, using cliches. Number two, uh, the response of false reassurance uh, negates the patient's feelings and may give false hope, which, if things turn out differently, can destroy trust in the nurse. Okay, we're going to move to second section of chapter eight. We're going to discuss the importance of communication in the collaborative process. We're going to list three guidelines for effective communication with a physician by phone. We're going to identify four ways to delegate effectively. We're going to discuss five ways the computer is used for communication with healthcare agencies. Describe how communication skills can affect the quality and safety of patient care. In clinical practice, use interviewing skills to obtain an admission history from a patient. Interact therapeutically in a goal-directed um, situation with a patient. Communicate effectively with a patient who has an impairment of communication. Give an effective report on assigned patients to your team leader or charge nurse. Be present and non-judgmental when communicating with patients and be mindful of their needs. When we are conducting an interview, an interview is more directed than a therapeutic communication interaction. Um, it has a planned and a definite purpose. An admission interview usually starts with close-ended questions that call for specific and definite answer, and then moves on to open-ended questions to determine a patient's concerns. The nurse-patient relationship is defined by specific boundaries. The nurse is a helper, is more of a helper role, I guess, rather than a social role. Empathy is important. A nurse should maintain a focus on the patient's feelings and acknowledge them, but not say, I know how you feel. That's condescending. If a patient has hearing aids, make sure that they are used and tuned on, or excuse me, turned on <laughs> before communicating. A person with hearing aids still might not hear ver very well, so these techniques should help promote comprehension. We want to speak very distinctly, do not shout, speak slowly, get the person's attention, maintain a good distance, you don't want to be too far away from them. Watch for nonverbal feedback, use short sentences, and paraphrase for clarification. A dry erase board um, sometimes is helpful when communicating with aphasic patients. Um, a speech therapist may not also be able to, to um, help advise nursing um, some good communication techniques with our aphasic patients. Older adults vary greatly in their ability to communicate. Older adults may have hearing, sensory, visual, or motor impairments. Eliminate outside distractions. Also, don't rush through communication because this may cause confusion or agitation. When you interact with an older adult, try not to speak too slowly. Um, allow or too fast, um, and don't yell at them either. Allow more time for the person to process your message and formulate a response. Many older adults have some degree of hearing loss, uh, but do not assume that all adults, older adults have that hearing loss. Face the person so that your lips can be seen and she or he has the best chance of hearing your words. 
Um, if the person is wearing a hearing aid, once again, make sure that it's turned on. The older adult has impaired hearing on one side. Position yourself on the side with the better hearing. Touch the patient's arm or shoulder um, gently to gain his or her attention before you start speaking. When we're communicating with children, we always want to be at eye level with our children. Um, it's important for you guys to understand that language, thought processes, and cognitive abilities are still developing in children. Young children are responsive, very responsive to nonverbal messages. Do not make sudden movements. Uh, with infants, keep the mother in view. With toddlers and preschoolers, focus on the child's needs and concerns. With school-age children, give simple explanations and demonstrate how equipment works. Listen to the children's concerns. Um, and with adolescents, use active listening, avoid interrupting, and show acceptance. Uh, be honest and tell the child what to expect. When we are communicating with people from all other cultures, do not show impatience with a patient's inability to speak English. That's rude. Uh, follow the patient's lead in terms of eye contact and personal space. When you are communicating with healthcare team members, um, it is crucial to ensure continuity of care for the patient. Uh, many different formats are used um, to give a shift report. Um, so that just, you'll see as you start to work, like what's what your facility does as far as shift, re shift report is concerned. Some do walking rounds, some do shift report right there at the nursing desk. The nurse should follow steps when calling a physician regarding a change in the patient's condition or any situation in which new orders are anticipated. If an order is given by the physician, note it in the chart and read it back to the physician to ensure that it is correct. Um, the student nurse should have an instructor or another registered nurse standing by to take the new orders from the physician because students cannot legally take telephone orders. The other thing that I want to make sure that you guys remember in terms of uh, talking to the doctors on the phones, you need to do SBAR. Remember SBAR, situation, background, assessment, and there's two R's. Um, recommendations and read back. It's actually I S bar. You're going to introduce yourself first, then tell the doctor what the situation is, then tell the doctor the patient's background, tell them the assessment, make your recommendation of why you're calling, and then you also want to read it back. Very important. You must communicate well in order to assign tasks and delegate to others effectively. When you are delegating, you want to give clear, concise messages and listen carefully to the feedback. So when we're using these computerized systems, we do have the ability to communicate um, across the board to many different departments like lab, um, radiology, CT, respiratory therapy. So it's very important to, um, to use those um, systems effectively. Nurses who work in home care often have both a professional role and a social role with their patients and families. It's essential to state when instructions are about to be given so active listening can occur, you want to leave written step-by-step -step instructions whenever you can. If you have updated med lists, you want to leave them a copy of those, um, so on and so forth. Question number five. Sarah has just graduated from nursing school. She realizes all of the following statements are true regarding communication, except number one, the ability to use a computer for communication is essential for today's nurse. 
Two, when communicating with a child, you should speak loudly and maintain an even tone so that the child can hear you. Three, phrases that tend to block or terminate communication should be avoided. Um, or four, giving an organized, efficient end-to-shift report is an important communication skill for nurses. Answer is number two, a child should be approached at eye level with a calm, quiet, friendly voice when communicating. Speaking loudly could scare a child. All the other statements are true.